to counter Tempai. First you gotta start adding Ghost Ogre to your deck, and use it on their field spell. Other than that, make sure to negate Pydra since it can search the field spell to become unaffected, or it cuts access to Kaiman so it's a win-win either way. And if you negated Pydra and they have Kaiman then Ash Blossom is good to use on that. Other than that, if they normal summon Jenriku and immediately tried to tribute it off, don't negate it since they might be baiting you and may have Kaiman in hand. DD Crow might be good this format to banish whatever Bident is trying to summon. If they just normal summon Chandra and have nothing else, then when they enter the battle phase, you have to imperm it immediately. Because you can't imperm it when it activates to summon from deck since it's the damage step. But sometimes all this might not be enough. So consider adding Threatening Roar or Wabaku for now if you're playing against Tenpai a lot. Droll isn't usually good against Tenpai. They'll OTK you anyway if they just have Chandra in hand. Nibiru is useless since they'll usually unaffected in the main phase. And evenly matched is terrible because Tenpai is a going second deck. And they play Shifter themselves so the deck doesn't care about that. Now against Ritual Beast. If they normal summon Kana Hawk or Pengu, you should Imperm or Veil of that. If they summon Elder, do not Imperm that. It doesn't negate the effect of giving an extra summon. If you have Gamma, I'd use it on Ultai Kana Hawk's second effect, the one that summons two from Banished Zone. As for Ash Blossom, use it on Lara's summoning from deck effect. Good alternative hand traps against this deck is Lancea. They can't do anything if they can't banish cards, Droll is. Extremely good against this deck it'll end their combo. Evenly is sometimes good. They might end on an Omni Negate sometimes depending on their hand. Nibiru isn't very good against this deck. It has anti-Nibiru combos and the deck plays shifter so it's not good against this deck. Tenpai and Ritual Beast were the new additions to this video. All the other decks that I'll show in this video I've already talked about in other videos but do stick around to refresh your memory. Onto you Bell, for a high risk high reward situation, you'll want to use your Ash Blossom on D Lotus. But if they have gates then they can discard Spirit to revive Spirit. So a safer Ash for me is using it on Nightmare Pain, this prevents both the search and the destruction of spirit. As for Imperm and Veiler, it's the same situation where an Imperm and Veiler on D-Lotus is high risk but also high reward. But if you want to be safer, use them on Spirit of you Bell. Gamma should ideally be used on D-Lotus as well. Because if you use it on Spirit, Spirit will summon a U-Bell from deck. The deck might struggle if you use Droll. But they should still end on 5 to 6 disruptions making Droll situationally good against you Bell depending on their hand. If you have Abyschal, you have to use it on the first Yubel monster that hits the grave, before they summon Phantom of you Bell, or if you negated D Lotus, and they're trying to revive it with Gates, you can banish that with Abyschal instead. As for the big impact hand traps, Nibra does nothing against this deck because they usually summon a Phantom before their fifth summon to negate. Evenly matched is sometimes good, only if they already used Yama's Grave effect. Otherwise they keep Appalusa then Yama revives Soul of Rage and they'll still have 6 disruptions. As for Shifter, this should also completely stop their turn 1 or make them end on 1 to 2 disruptions. To counter Voiceless Voice, you generally want to use your Imperm and Veiler on low, because it negates both her search effect and her being treated as full material for a ritual summon. Same for Frame Gear Gamma you'll want to use it on low. And ideally you want to save Ash Blossom for Sapphira. But only if you didn't see them search Skull Guardian. However if they started with pre-preparations then you have to Ash that. Otherwise they'll summon an Omni Negate. However. If their first summon was Skull Guardian using Low from hand. Then just use any hand trap on Skull Guardian before Low revives itself and Skull Guardian gets an Omni Negate. You can also use Bistuls on Sapphira. Since this prevents them from ritual summoning. Or use it on low if it's attempting to revive itself and they haven't activated Safra yet. As for Call by the Grave, save it for Safra if it's their turn and you went first. Or you can just use it on low if she's attempting to revive itself after they've already ritual summoned. The deck isn't too bothered by Droll since many hands can play right through it. Evenly matched isn't very useful since Skull Guardian can just negate it. Nibiru is useless since they usually only summon three times and even if they summon more than Skull Guardian can just negate it. Shifter is incredibly good against Voiceless Voice since it basically prevents Safra from activating and also prevents Lo from reviving itself. Next we have Snake Eyes Fire King. 
You'll want to use your Ash Blossom on original Sinful Spoils if they started the duel with Diabelster or by normal summoning Ash. This will either end their combo or cut them off from their Fire King engine. You'll also want to use your Veiler or Imperm on Snake Eye Ash. It's a high risk high reward situation because they can dodge the negate with Kirin. But worth the risk in my opinion, you'll want to use Gamma on Snake Eye Ash as well. The deck doesn't lose to Droll because they can just do full Snake Eyes combo without searching. A really good counter against this deck is using Abyssal. Use it to banish Mascarina from their grave. This makes the deck a lot weaker. As for the high impact hand traps, Dimension Shifter should completely stop the deck from making combos so do use it if your deck can afford it. Snake Eyes Fire King does not lose to Nibiru. The deck has great anti-Nibiru combos. It also doesn't lose to evenly matched, but it depends on the end board. If the end board is Arvada and Amblohale, they can keep Whale and pop it with a Kirin in hand to trigger Whale to revive Mascarina. But evenly matched is still good to use versus this deck in my opinion. Next we have Rescue Ace. You'll want to use your Ash Blossom generally on original Sinful Spoils if that's what they open with. Or if they open with Airlifter to search Emergency, then you should use your Ash Blossom on Emergency. As for Imperm and Veiler, the ideal target is Turbulence. But they generally make little Knight to protect Turbulence. So instead, you'll want to use your Imperm and Veiler to prevent them from searching Turbulence. So if they summon Airlifter, that's usually a good negate because otherwise they can search for Emergency to dodge your targeted negates. You should also know that you can't target Hydrant if they have another Rescue Ace on field. So if they're activating Hydrant, while they have no other monsters, this generally tells you they don't have another Rescue Ace to summon. So you can use your Imperm or Veiler on that instead, the deck isn't affected by Droll because Turbulence sets from deck. As for Gamma, you want to save it for Turbulence, because Little Knight can't protect. As for Nibiru, it is sometimes good. If they started the combo with Diabelster or Poplar, then Turbulence is usually their fifth or sixth summon. Shifter can sometimes be good depending on their hand, but they should still resolve Turbulence even under Shifter, making it not very good against Rescue Ace. As for Evenly Matched, it'll win you the game against Rescue Ace. They have no negate for it, and their disruptions are usually tied to many different cards. As for Branded, everyone knows to save Ash Blossom for Branded Fusion, no matter how many bait cards they activate before Branded Fusion. As for Imperm or Veiler, use it on a Lubber, because you're either preventing them from searching Branded Fusion, or if they have Branded Fusion in hand, then you're preventing them from searching Branded Lost which makes your Imperm and Veiler useless anyway. Same thing for Gamma. Use it on a Lubber. But sometimes they might try to search Branded Fusion without a Lubber, using Grangwignal. So you can Imperm or Veiler Cartesia when it activates to Fuse. Or if they have Retribution in Grave, you can Imperm or Veiler Guiding Quem if they normal summon it after they have Retribution in Grave. Droll does not hurt the deck because their first summon is usually for Branded Fusion. Or they can just grab Branded Fusion from Grave. Bistral can be used on Fallen of Albaz after they activate Branded Fusion, completely disrupting their fusion plays. But only do this if they only have one Albaz in Grave. Nibiru isn't very useful against Branded, since you'll be sending their Albion to Grave as well which can set Banishment to revive Mirror Jade. Shifter also isn't very good, but it depends on the hand. If they have a Luber, then Shifter didn't do much. If they have to summon Cartesia then Shifter will banish the Branded Fusion so they can't grab it from Grave. Evenly matched is extremely good against Branded, they have no negate for it, and should only have one or two disruptions after you use Evenly. If you play against Turlaments, you'll want to save all of Ash Blossom, Imperm, and Veiler for their Kitkalos. Using Imperm and Veiler on Kitkalos negates both its effects so it is more ideal. It is slightly affected by Droll as you can't search with whatever you mill with Kitkalos' effect. The deck does get hurt a lot by Bistuls or DD Crows so make sure to use them on either Havnus or Skyrim. Tear Laments often gets Relcalos out to negate Nibiru before the 5th summon, so Nibiru is usually not good enough. And since Tear Laments can summon Baran and search Tear Laments Crime, they'll often have a negate for your evenly matched. But the deck does auto lose to Dimension Shifter since it heavily relies on the graveyard. As for Pearly, You'll want to save your Ash Blossom for my friend Pearly. As for Imperm and Veiler, if they don't have Stray Street, always save them for Pearly Lee. If they do have Stray Street, then Imperm and Veiler are useless. 
so just use them on whatever they normal summon. Always use Gamma on Pearly Lee as well. As for Droll, it does turn off my friend Pearly, because they usually search it with Pearly Lee first. You can also use DD Crow for when they activate Pearly Lee targeting a spell in Grave. DD Crow can banish that spell before they Xyz summon, but to counter their unaffected boss monster, you can use Herald of the Abyss to send it to Grave, or Kurakara to tribute it, or just Underworld Goddess to link using it, or simply a Kaiju. You can also use Triple Tactics Talent to take control of it after it spins once, then just link it away. Pearly generally summon twice during their turn so Nibiru is useless. Evenly as well doesn't do much because they can choose to just keep their unaffected boss monster. But the deck generally struggles against Shifter since it can't Xyz with a spell and grave if everything is banished. As for Labyrinth, you always save your Ash Blossom for their Big Welcome Labyrinth. However, if it is your turn and they have both Welcome and Big Welcome set then you should use Ash on whatever they activate first, since if they summon Lovely first with Welcome, it'll make it so you can't respond to Big Welcome with your Ash Blossom. As for Imperm and Valor, you can generally use it on Ariana when they normal summon. In hope of not letting them activate Big Welcome on turn 1, or if you want to play it safer, you can save it for Lovely but by then they'll have recovered their furniture cards so I recommend using Imperm and Valor on Ariana, same for Gamma, use it on Ariana since they can chain block the lovely, the deck doesn't care about Droll, they only search once per turn anyway and the furniture set cards directly from deck instead of searching. Labyrinth doesn't care about Nibiru because they almost never summon 5 times a turn. They can also play under Shifter sometimes because Ariana can just directly search Big Welcome, but the deck struggles a lot against evenly matched since they usually have no negates for it. Against Centurion, you'll want to use your Ash Blossom on Primera, because that's generally the only chance you get to use your Ash. As for Imperm and Valor, definitely use them on Oxala since it not only searches but also places Centurion monsters back on field from Grave in the end phase. You also generally use your Gamma on Primera since it gets rid of their tuner, Centurion isn't too affected by Droll. It'll only be preventing one search, it also doesn't care about Nibiru's since they don't. Summon 5 times a turn, evenly matched usually breaks their entire field. But they might have a negate for it if they chose to synchro early during your turn. As for Shifter, the deck plays well under it since Oxala can bring back Centurion monsters even from the banished zone. Against Mathmic, if they don't start with Circular, you can use Ash, Imperm, and Vela on Alambear to prevent them from searching Circular. And even if they do start the duel with Circular, you'll still want to negate Alambear to prevent them from searching Diameter. But if you do have multiple negates then make sure to negate both Circular and Alambear. This cuts access to both Circular hopefully and Super Factorial. The deck does struggle against Nibiru since it doesn't put up a negate. Turn 1, however, it will have negates for your evenly matched next turn. And it struggles to play under Shifter since Mage and Transcode Talker can't revive. Super Factorial is dead and Terahertz can't send cards to grave. Subscribe if this video helped.